All right, the Toyota Tundra is finally fixed. Uh, it's aligned and everything turned out well. But before we get started on the video, just want to let you know that when you're changing out the rack and pinion and everything else, make sure you tie the steering wheel to the center. It's not centered right there, right? Make sure that it's centered and everything is straight because we took it to get aligned and it was it wasn't centered and they couldn't align it because there was not enough threads <laughs> so we were way off so we had to center it take the uh we had to take um uh the steering column off um not the steering column what ties see if i can see it here you can't see it. The, what ties the rack and pinion um you'll see it in the video what ties the rack and pinion to the um steering we had to take that off and then center it try to get it right and then we took it in and then they were able to do it so you won't see that in the video um we learned that after the fact but let's get started with the video we're changing out control arms ball joints tie rods and the rack and pinion i hope this video helps all right we have a 2002 toyota tundra let's get started first things first we want to make sure that the battery positive and negative is removed so first things first is the cotter pin let's straighten that up get that out 19 millimeter remember you know it's a little bit rusty so we might shoot it with some wd-40 but then you get this bad boy in here and then what happens is that this squeezes on it by you know using the impact tool this squeezes on it and put Okay, there it is. Let's see if I can put some light on it. All right, then we put a 24 millimeter down there. And then you should see it snap. So 24 millimeter. You could do it with a socket, but this is fun. nicely done all right so remember this tool we rented at AutoZone and basically it makes that come out a lot quicker you don't need to hammer or anything just right out all right now that we got both tie rods out right now we're going to start removing it now there's two big bolts one here one here but before we do that we got to take out the uh, power steering line so we're, these are 17 millimeters Okay, let's get underneath and take a look. It's going to come out, so to have the pan ready. And here it comes. So it looks like it's a little it's bit loose. more it's loose hidden. Already. Oh, it's loose already? Yeah, it's already loose. All right. But, oh, wait, wait. Let me try this one. Okay, I started. There we go. So it, they came out pretty easy, though. So, all right. Now let's just loosen them up and get all the rest of the power steering. Uh, we did go up to the top. I didn't show you that, but at the top we got as much power steering fluid as we could out. And so now the rest of it should come out. Put the jack here. The, and so you see the jack. Oh, it's really coming out now. Um, we put it right where we're trying to get to that bolt. So we're going to have to reposition the jack. All right, now we're taking out the collar. It's a 12 millimeter, and um, I don't. There's three bolts above it, but I don't think we have to take that off. I think we just have to take that little that bolt. We'll get a better look when we look at the new one. So now the other two, while he's doing that, we got a 22 millimeter, and it's gonna go right here, and the 22 millimeter right in there. All right, we got a 22 millimeter, but we got too big of an extension. But we're gonna try it. Ready? Ready. That's in there good. We're gonna have to get some more leverage. Oh, there it goes. So you need a 22 deep socket, and that's the problem. We didn't have a deep socket. 
All right, we got past that 22 millimeter. Uh, definitely power tool, breaker bar, <laughs> everything else you need. Um, a deep socket 22 would work. Okay, now 19 millimeter. Right here and right here. And we're getting close for this guy to come out. So we'll take this off and then see if it um, comes out of there. Okay, you see that uh, <laughs> we removed it. Now, let me take a step back and we had to take the stabilizer bar off because it would not come out with the, without the stabilizer bar. And how did we do that? We just took it off the link. Now we are gonna replace this link. So we took the, we got into it and took it out 14 millimeter. And then the stabilizer came bar out, and then the rest of it came out. So sorry I didn't film it. You know how you get you get into it. Uh, that's where the that's where it was holding the stabilizer bar. All right, as you can see, I already took the control arm out, and um, and I'm sorry I didn't film it because we got into it because it it took us a while to figure it out. So um, now it totally makes sense. So I'm just gonna let you know what you need to do. So we took out the ball joint <clears throat> and the control arm all at once because we're replacing both okay and so there's four bolts here there's a total of six bolts one two three four four bolts here the bolt that goes here there it's a i believe it's a 19 millimeter and that's for the uh, shock absorber all right so and um we had to use the small jack to you know just lift it up and down to get it uh, you know so aligned so that we could take out that bolt all right, those came out really quick, simple, nothing to it. Here was the hard part. This was like this, all right? And we were trying to put a 19 millimeter on this and trying to move it because we thought that this was the part that moves. It is not, it is the outside parts, which makes sense because there's not a lot of room to work in here. So we put a 22 millimeter out, out here and it came right out. Okay, so that's the trick. Do not try to turn the inside. You got to do the outsides. 22 millimeter, it comes right out. And then after that came out, this comes out. Now that is used for alignment. As you can see, someone had already marked it here. There's a little hole. And then on the inside over there, you should see some more markings. So we're going to get it aligned professionally. So they'll do that. So we're not too worried about, you know, looking at it. But that was the trick. Once we figured that out, <clears throat> that goes in here, and then the bolt goes through. So 22 millimeter, the bolt came out, this came out, and then that comes out. Then that's it. It all comes out. Same thing on this side. Took the 22 millimeter out that direction. All right. That time it came out with this um, with the alignment pins. Same thing here on this side. So. All right, there's the first bolt to getting the rack and pinion on. It should be like a 12 millimeter. That's gonna go on. Then this slid, up, slid on. So that's number two. Number three, this one's gonna go here. And then number four, is this bracket with this uh, mount, uh, rubber mount, okay? You have to press it all the way down. All right, so let me go over here and show you. So we learned, right? So we pressed it all the way down first. Now we did this sort of backwards. <laughs> uh, we pressed it all the way down until we could put the cotter pin in. And then we put the cotter pin in. So that's how, you know, we, we had to press it all the way down. And then we're gonna let them, you know, adjust everything. Now, we went to AutoZone to grab the other, um, the other tie rod end. And guess what? This one, it just went in like nothing. And it went all the way down and it doesn't have a lock. It has a lock washer, not a pin. But this one went straight in and you didn't have to press it. It's a different one. Uh, from from AutoZone so be mindful you might have to press it in or you might just have the one that just goes in so that took us some time to, to get over it so that should be it let's start uh, oh we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with uh, do a flush 
We're going to put ATF, Dextron, Dextron 3. Uh, let me show you which one. This one, STP Automatic ATF, multi-purpose, uh, and uh, it's Dextron 3. There, we're going to go ahead and spill as much as we, you know, do a flush. And so we can get nice fluid in there. All right, so let's go take a look down here. Remember, just flushing the lines until it starts looking better. There goes the other one. And we're probably going to put mm, maybe a cord in. Bust. All right, so one side, you see it's starting to be pink. Oh, there, both sides are nice and pink now. All right, here we go. Remember these um, these pressure feed tubes? See, now I'm using all the right names because it says there, pressure feed tubes. Uh, with SST, and ours is without, 18 uh, foot-pounds. We are in the good old USA. Here it says newton meters, something else, foot-pounds. So we're going to be using 18. Now I do have this special wrench set that I use for another system, you know, which is kind of nice. It's an open one. So anyway, uh, we're going to set it and we're going to go over here and let me try to take some video. All right. So it took a little jiggling, yeah. but he's got it in there. So he's hand tightening and then we're going to put the wrench in there. I got the first one. The first one's in now. And like I said, 20, million, 20 foot pounds is not a lot. Not to know. That's it, 20 foot pounds. So you, you see, it's not a lot. And if it leaks a little bit, then we'll put a lot, we'll put a, we'll tighten it up. But so anyway, we got this special wrench. You don't need it, but um, it helps. There's other ways to do it, but 20 foot pounds. Yes. All right, while he's doing that, next step is we, there's a little bracket up here, remember that held, it's just held it in place. We'll just do, I don't know what it calls for as far as torque. But uh, we're just gonna do that nice and tight because it's just a bracket. Uh, it's just right there, you see? It's just holding the lines, so. We'll tighten that up and then we'll keep going, uh, torquing everything down. All right, for those of you wondering, this little bracket is 21 foot-pounds. Uh, it's called a clamp plate, so doesn't really matter. All right, let's move on to the big boys here. This one, it's gonna be 96 foot pounds okay the one that, and then the one that goes up and down is 123 mm -hmm. foot pounds all right and uh let's get another one in there too the one that goes on the steering wheel uh the uh intermediate shaft assembly excuse me <laughs> that one right that one is going to be 26 foot pounds so let's get the 26 foot pounds the one that goes up there um that's 26 foot pounds that one is 96 and 123. All right, there, that's 26 foot pounds for that collar. We're, yes. we're getting close. We're gonna have to read it. Okay, we're gonna have to read it, but that looks like 96. All right, not gonna lie, that one that was uh, 126, that was a bear to get in there. Uh, that was 96, I'm sorry, that one. 123. All right, we got up there, but it was tough, so be careful. Mm -hmm. All right, I spoke too soon. That bracket, 123. So let's get after it. 123 for that bracket. And that bracket is wow. underneath here. Right there. So 123. All right, now we're gonna put the stabilizer bar, and guess what? I was gonna, I was like, let's just put a bunch of torque on there. It's only 27 foot pounds, so 27 foot pounds for that stabilizer bar bracket, which is right there. Okay, and you see the bolts sticking out. And uh, all right, let's get underneath it, shan't we? All right. There's the stabilizer, and then here's that the bolts. You got to get them from the top. It's only 27 foot pounds, so not a lot. These guys, 
All right, I'm upside down, but those guys were, oh, I mean, I haven't even gotten to there. 124 foot pounds, that's quite a bit. So that was those two and that guy. These were kind of easy because you were, you had gravity working with you. So anyway, let's get these brackets down. 27 foot pounds, not a lot. All right, next, uh, we're gonna move along. We're gonna go ahead and finish up this tie rod, make sure it's at 67. All right, next thing we're doing is the lock nut with the tie rod, and that is 41 foot pounds, so not too much. All right, and where is that? That's this guy. All right, 41 foot pounds. Good shot. All right, we're running out of time, so let's do this quickly. 100 foot pounds for the shock absorber, which is that one right there. All right, next is these four. And they are 59 foot-pounds, so if you remember correctly, those four are the four right there. So hopefully you can see them. I have my phone upside down, so. All right, four, that's the ball joint. All right, we're running out of daylight. Oh, let's keep going. All right, moving right along the link. 14 on top, which is not a lot, 51 on the bottom i'm set to foot pounds and i'm set to 51 and the link is this bad boy so 14 above there and 51 back here all right we are seriously out of sunlight so last things the adjustments here the 22 millimeter 19 millimeter same thing over there 19 and 22 very hard to get except for that one that was kind of easy all right so that is the alignment right so here we go these are the four and adjust camber and caster okay and so we're gonna let the pros do that part or the machine yeah do that all right so those are the four right on the control arm you see the rear cam rear cam front cam front cam that is how it's controlled all i want to know is you torque the front and or rear adjustment cam set bolts to 96 foot pounds all right we were almost done and it was getting dark and uh trying to rush things and uh, of course uh something was wrong <laughs> and you know what's wrong uh we didn't bleed the vacuum lines um, not vacuum lines. We didn't bleed the power steering. And so the way you bleed the power steering is not like the brakes, right? You, we fill it up with power steering fluid. And then what uh, my driver is going to do is he's going to turn the wheels left and right 10 times. And so let's see if we can hear the air bubbles coming out um, because that's what we're, we're hearing. So, all right, let's begin. Yeah, you see the bubbles? Very nice. Oh, it's gonna spill. Let me get a pan. All right, we're gonna keep going. So he's turning it left and right. He's gonna do it about 10 times and you'll see bubbles come up every once in a while right there. See the bubbles? All right, so we're just getting all the air out of the lines. And so we'll do this, um, make sure that we fill it up with power steering fluid. All right, we've turned it on. This is our second rotation. We filled it up a little bit more with, uh, well, in this case, it's transmission fluid, Dextron 3 for the Tundra, but sometimes you have to use regular power steering. But um, every once in a while, you'll see a bubble come up. All right, the Toyota Tundra is finally fixed. Uh, it's aligned and everything turned out well, but just wanna let you know that when you're changing out the rack and pinion and everything else, make sure you tie the steering wheel to the center. It's not centered right there, right? Make sure that it's centered and everything is straight because we took it to get aligned and it, was, it wasn't centered and they couldn't align it because there was not enough threads. <laughs> So we were way off, so we had to 
center it, take the, uh, we had to take uh, uh, the steering column off. Um, not the steering column, what ties, see if I can see it here. You can't, see, the, what ties the rack and pinion, um, you'll see it in the video, what ties the rack and pinion to the um, steering. We had to take that off and then center it, try to get it right, and then we took it in and then they were able to do it. So you won't see that in the video. Um, we learned that after the fact. But let's get started with the video. We're changing out control arms, ball joints, tie rods, and the rack and pinion. I hope this video helps. That's it. Uh, I wish I could have made a better video, but this was a rush job and we had to get it done. And basically rack and pinion, lower control arm, links, ball joint. Uh, that is what's new. And uh, hopefully that gave you a good idea to tackle this on your own. Good luck. Uh, remember, please like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Have a great rest of your day.